Hi, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe how convergent boundaries form due to plate tectonics and what sorts of geological phenomena are associated with convergent boundaries. Let's start our discussion with this image. This is a picture of mountain climbers in the Alps. The Alps are a very impressive, very rugged range of mountains that run across southern Europe. Why are the Alps there? How did they form, and what does that have to do with convergent boundaries? Well, to answer that question, we need to go back to the basics of plate tectonics. You'll recall that the Earth's outermost stiff, rocky layer, the lithosphere, is broken into a series of plates, which basically are coherent slabs that move around the face of the Earth. And as they move around, they have motions relative to their neighboring plates. And essentially, we can classify these motions one of three different ways. These are the three kinds of plate boundaries. Plates can move apart from one another, in which case we call them divergent. They can move towards one another, in which case we call them convergent. Or they can move simply past one another, sliding along with lateral motion. What we want to focus on here today are the examples where the plates are moving towards one another. So these are the convergent plate boundaries. There are three different circumstances we can get when we have two plates moving towards one another. The first circumstance is subduction. So here you have a plate where the leading edge is made out of oceanic lithosphere meeting up with a plate where the leading edge is made out of continental lithosphere. The oceanic lithosphere is more dense than the continental lithosphere, so it subducts. That means it gets shoved down underneath the overriding plate. The overriding plate doesn't subduct because it's made out of less dense rock. So the average density of oceanic crust is around a 3. Continental crust is around a 2.7. And so as these two interact, the denser one is set up to subduct. This produces magma at depth. Basically, that plate, as it goes down into the mantle, starts to lose water. That triggers partial melting in the overlying mantle, and magma is produced. That magma will rise up through the crust and may make it all the way to the surface where it will erupt as a volcano. You end up getting a chain of volcanoes paralleling this subduction zone, and we call that a continental volcanic arc. All right, so that's the first circumstance where oceanic lithosphere meets continental lithosphere. The second circumstance is where you have oceanic lithosphere meeting up with other oceanic lithosphere. So in many cases where you have two plates moving towards one another, the leading edges of the two plates are both oceanic lithosphere. Once again, you get subduction in this circumstance. One of the plates will subduct underneath its neighbor. And usually what will happen here is that the older of the two plates will be the one that subducts. Why the older one? Because the older oceanic lithosphere is colder, and colder rocks are more dense than warm rocks. So the younger crust usually wins in this circumstance. Once again, magma is produced at a critical depth. That magma rises to the surface, and it pokes up through that oceanic lithosphere as a chain of volcanic islands, a volcanic island arc. Lastly is the circumstance where two plates are meeting up with one another, but the leading edge of both plates is continental lithosphere, not oceanic lithosphere. This is what happens usually after oceanic lithosphere has been completely subducted and an ocean basin has been closed and two continents ram into one another. So as the continents move towards one another, they're both too buoyant, meaning they have a low density, so they can't subduct. So what happens is they end up crunching into one another and rock gets shoved both upwards and downwards. So you end up thickening the crust at that location and you end up raising up mountains. Uh, in this diagram, these mountains are labeled as the Himalayas, but it really could be any continent-continent um, collisional mountain belt. Another example of that is the example we started with, the Alps. So the Alps are forming due to the convergence of the African plate and the Eurasian plate. As those two plates mash into one another, the Alps are shoved upwards into the air. The same thing happened on the east coast of the United States in the late Paleozoic, resulting in the Appalachian Mountains. Let's take a look at another American example here. Here's Mount Shasta, one of the Cascade Range volcanoes. It's in Northern California. This is a composite volcano. So what do you think that that would be likely to be evidence of? What sort of plate boundary? Consider that it's a composite volcano and that it's rising up on top of continental crust. 
If you answered a convergent plate boundary where oceanic crust is subducted underneath continental crust, in other words, a continental volcanic arc, congratulations. That's the correct answer. Thanks for your attention. This has been another smart figure.